Okay friends, it's time to get started on our job. One of the first things you want to do is safely raise and support the vehicle so you can get underneath the center. Looking up here, you can see exactly where your catalytic converter is and where your downstream O2 sensor is. We're going to have to remove the O2 sensor from the catalytic converter. So if you go ahead and follow the wire all the way over here, we're going to try to locate the connector for this. That's located underneath this plastic shield. So let's go ahead and get this out of the way. Looking up along here, you're going to find a 10 millimeter headed nut. It's plastic. We'll go ahead and remove that and make our way down the line as needed so we can pull this down and access that connector. We can carefully pull down on this a little bit and that exposes the connector. Now to remove this, I'm going to use a small pick and I essentially want to go ahead and pull down on this just enough so I can see it. And then I'm going to come in between the area of the two connectors and gently pry right along here. Once you have it like that, you can go ahead and pull it apart. And of course, you're going to want to inspect both sides of the connector. You want to make sure that you don't see any funny colors because that would be corrosion and you would have to deal with it. Let's go ahead and set that aside. And now we can start pulling the connector out of this bracket and out of this area right here. Now let's go ahead and use a larger pick and we're going to get up and in between the area where the plastic bracket connects onto the body of the vehicle. We'll just gently pry in between to separate the two. Now we can bring this down to an area that we can work on it. We're going to have to slide this right out of its bracket. To do that, I'm just going to grab onto it and we'll carefully slide it up and out. Here we are. We can take that bracket, we'll give it a quick inspection, and we can set this aside because we will be reusing it. Now the wire should be inside here. It might have potentially fallen out, but all you do is just grab onto the little tab and you can pull it right out of there. We can let this hang down, and now we can move up to the downstream O2 sensor where it connects onto the catalytic converter. Let's use an O2 sensor socket to go ahead and remove this. You can see it has a nice slot over it for where the wire has to be able to go through. Let's go ahead and turn this counterclockwise to remove it. Now we can move along to this cross member bracket. You're going to find four 13 millimeter nuts. Let's remove all of them and the bracket. Now let's move right down here to the clamp that connects the catalytic converter to your muffler pipe. Looking at this, you can see that we have some rotted nuts, so I can't really tell you what size they should be. I'm just going to go ahead and use a twist socket to remove it. If you have to use a twist socket to remove it, typically you have to replace the nut. Now once you have both of those loose, the next thing you want to do is start spreading these ears and then we can go ahead and slide them up the pipe and out of the way. You can go ahead and take those right off of there. For ours, ours broke. So I'm just going to go ahead and replace this. If you don't want to replace the whole thing and yours did break the bolt, you can just go ahead and knock that out of there and replace the bolt with a brand new nut as well. Now we're going to start separating this. You're going to find that it's multi-layered. The reason why it's multi-layered is because these two pipes actually butt directly up against each other. They don't go over each other. So this right here has one piece that's going to go around the two tubes and it's going to have a slot. 
and then it has another piece that goes around that same piece, but you want to make sure that the slot is not lined up with the other one. Essentially, it needs to make sure that it's band-aided all the way around. Now let's move up to where the catalytic converter slash flex pipe meets up to the manifold. Remove all four of your 12 millimeter nuts. Alright, at this point everything is unbolted. We're going to continue on to removing these areas from their mounting points. Now for me, I just like to use a nice pry bar as leverage. I'm going to carefully get in between this area and pry right up against this area of the pipe itself and up against here, being very careful not to damage anything. As we start prying this out, keep in mind there's nothing else holding this pipe in position. Slide it off of those studs up there. Let's carefully remove it from the vehicle. Now that we have this out of the car, the next thing that I'm going to do is go ahead and remove this heat shield along here. We need to make sure that we transfer this over to the brand new catalytic converter. Looking at it, you can see that ours is rotted. We have rotted bolts here over here, and as I turn it over, you're gonna find the other two are rotted as well. So with that said, typically you just wanna go ahead and take them out of there, I'm gonna cut mine. Now we can set our original catalytic converter aside and then we can clean and inspect our heat shield. Okay, at this point you want to just go ahead and make sure that you do a quick product comparison. You want to make sure that it's overall the same length and of course it has all the same mounting points. Now assuming it looks good, you can go ahead and set the original one aside and we can start mounting our heat shield to the new catalytic converter. Let's get this in position. I'm going to start in my mounting bolts. I went ahead and grabbed some new ones. We'll make sure we start all of them in before we tighten any of them up. Let's make our way up to the manifold. We're going to go ahead and remove that gasket. Once that's out of the way, you want to inspect the flange area. Typically, you're going to want to go ahead and clean it down with something, maybe a little bit of sandpaper. Make sure it's a nice smooth surface. You could also use a wire brush. Once you feel as though you have it cleaned down enough, let's take our brand new gasket. We're going to slide it in position on the manifold. Now once you have that all on there, we're going to continue on with a little bit of lubricant and I just want to get right inside of each one of these ports. That's just going to help make it so when we put the catalytic converter in position, it should slide in fairly easily. Okay, now it's time to install our brand new catalytic converter. Let's just go ahead and start putting it up near those studs on the manifold. As we're getting it close up there, we also need to pay attention down along here to our lower mounting points.
Okay, so now that you have it in the position down along the bottom and up on the flange, go ahead and start on your brand new nuts. With all of them started, let's go ahead and snug them up. Let's go ahead and clean down our pipe back here. Now the next thing that we have to do is try to connect these two pipes directly up against each other, butt them against each other. So all you'd want to do is grab onto one and you can go ahead and pull it right up against. Now when I do this, I'm going to have to try to slide the clamp over that and then lock it down. Typically this is going to be easiest with two people. Now as you can tell, I have them pressed together. We're going to go ahead and take this area here now we're going to slide it over. And like I said before, when we were taking it apart, this is actually double layered. So if I could spin this outer portion a little bit, you'd be able to see that there's a secondary slot behind here. You just want to make sure that the two slots do not line up in any way. So up against there, slide this right over. We want to try to center this. So we want to make sure that it's right in between. Now, once you feel as though you have the crack right in the center of this, we're going to continue on with our clamp. All right. So now that we have this centered, the next thing I'm going to do is start putting my clamps back on here. And I'll just use some pliers to squeeze them down so I can start in some brand new bolts. Now the next thing I always like to do before I go ahead and tighten them is I want to make sure that I have them as close to lined up as possible. I don't like to have them just all mixed and matched. Make sure both of them are nice and tight. Let's get this bar back up on here. Okay friends, now it's time to install our downstream O2 sensor. Let's start by putting it directly into the catalytic converter by hand and then we'll make sure that we tighten it with our ratchet. So right there, it feels as though it's stopped. I just want to take it a little bit further so I can make sure that I crush that gasket down. Now let's go ahead and grab onto that plastic bracket. Looking along the top of it, you can see the tiny hole that needs to slide over the mounting stud that's on the body. Also, when you put this in, it needs to be in this position like this. The area that we're going to slide our connector into is right along here. Let's take that connector and we want to make sure that we have the tab where the lock is facing towards us. I'm going to go ahead and take this and slide it right down into position. Lock it right in there. Make sure it's nice and secure. You don't want this wobbling around on you while you're driving down the road. Now we can go ahead and start putting this up and underneath the shield. We'll reconnect our electrical connector. Listen for a click, and then give it a tug to make sure it's secure. Now let's go ahead and take this, and we're going to slide it up onto that mounting stud that I showed you. Now let's slide this into its mounting point as well. Now we can take this cover, and we'll press it up into position, and we can start tightening our 10 millimeter plastic nuts. Now at this point we have everything back together, let's just double check to make sure that the O2 sensor wire is not hanging down where it could potentially get caught on something. 
Now the next thing you're going to want to do is go ahead and lower the vehicle back down to the ground. We're going to go ahead and start it up, let it run for a little while, make sure you don't have a check engine light, and make sure you don't have any exhaust leaks. After that, take it for a road test. Thanks for watching.